There's double-barreled action for you this week. Tonight, Gunsmoke. Saturday night, Gunsmoke again. At the end of tonight's show, I'll give you the details. Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. America's most popular two-way cigarette. What a pair. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. Chesterfield regular. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Where, Mr. Dillon, it seems like we've been riding with that cottonwood grove the last two hours. Well, that's because you started thinking about it before you even saw it, Chester. It's water I've been thinking about. I won't never make it to Dodge without water. <laughs> You'll make it. Not saying I won't. Wait a minute, Chester. Look over there. Huh. Who are they? What are they doing in there? Well, the man on the paint horse is Bill Pence, Emmett Bowers' foreman. The other two must be riders of his. Yeah, but that kid they've got... Look, his hands is tied behind his back. Yeah, they haven't seen us yet, Chester. Let's ride closer. Huh? What's Pence taking down his rope for? What? Well, Mr. Dillon, you know what they're doing? Yeah, only they're not going to do it. Uh, they've seen us now. Hello, Pence. What are you doing out here, Marshal? I'm on my way into Dodge. Does Bowers know what's going on out here? Marshal, I'm foreman of this outfit. Emmett Bowers don't question how I handle things. Whose horse is that kid sitting on? What? The boy there. Is that his horse? Well, yeah, it's his horse. Why? Chester. Yes, sir? Go untie his hands. Here, wait a minute. Go Marshal. on, Chester. And if anybody interferes with you, I'll shoot him. Okay, Mr. Dillon. You're making trouble, Marshal. Pence, you know me. You know I won't stand for lynching. And you know I'll kill you if I have to. Yeah, I think you would. But this still ain't none of your business, Marshal. I caught that boy. I don't care what you caught him trying to do. I'm taking him into Dodge, and if you want to ride in and make your charges against him legally, he'll be there. And you can thank your luck I came by here before you got your own neck in a noose. Because I'd have caught you for this fence, and I'd have followed you to California for it. Now you get out of here. All three of you. Morning, Chester. Morning, Mr. Dillon. How's the boy this morning? Fine. Except he's wondering when you're going to turn him loose. Well, I saw Emmett Bowers and Bill Pence riding up the street when I came in. Maybe we'll learn the truth about all this now. The boy swears he ain't lying. Yeah, maybe he isn't. Now here they come. Marshal Dillon. Chester. Morning, Mr. Bowers. Hello, Bowers. Pence. I told Mr. Bowers the whole story, Marshal. Did you? He did, Marshal. 
What you called a lynching wasn't going to be no lynching at all. No? No. It was just a hanging. Pence and them two riders of mine caught that fella trying to run off a bunch of my cattle. That's cattle thieving, Marshal, and where I come from, that's a hanging offense. The law, Bowers, the law decides who hangs and who doesn't. The law is too slow. Now, cow thieves has got to be hung when you catch them. I told you yesterday, Pence, you lynch anybody out there and I'll come after you. I don't care what you call it. Now, I'm not going to argue about this, gentlemen. We'll worry about that later. Right now, I want to know what you're going to do with that thief. Well, I haven't decided yet, Bowers. But I'll tell you what he told me. I ain't interested in what he told you. Listen, anyway. He said he didn't steal any cows, and what's more, he wasn't going to. Well, that's a lie, Marshal. Me and the men watched him cut 15 head out. And then did he leave him and start to ride away, or didn't he? Oh, well, sure, he started to ride away. He either seen this, or, or he was coming back and drive him off at night, one or the other. He says he changed his mind. He realized he couldn't do it even though he started to. You believe oh. a thieving kid rather than a man like Bill Pence, Marshal? I don't know who I believe yet, Bowers. Let's get out of here, Pence. Yes, sir. Marshal Dillon, I'll be mighty interested in what you decide to do about this. So will every other cattleman I know of. I want to talk to that boy, Chester. Mm-hmm. He's right back there waiting. Hello, Marshal. Unlock the cell, Chester. Yes, sir. You said your name's Steve Elser. Is that true? I got no reason to lie about my name, Marshal. Uh, where are you from? San Juan Mountains, Marshal. Over in Colorado. What are you doing in Kansas? I'm 18. I figured it was time to leave home. Why? I'd have killed my pa or he'd have killed me if I'd stayed. Yeah. He ain't let me sleep in the house since I was 10, Marshal. Sometimes he don't even let my ma sleep in the house. Why not? Oh, nothing my pa does makes much sense. I think he got his brains knocked loose about ten years back. Time a grizzly bear slapped him in the head. It most like to kill him. And I wished it had. I see. Tell me about those cattle of Emmett Bowers, Elsa. You admit you started to steal them. Oh, shucks, I'd have never done it, Marshal. Not really. I was just kind of seeing how easy it'd be. Well, you found out. Fence and his riders were watching you the whole time. I know. They told me. Well, there's one thing about you. At least you don't carry a gun. Maybe I'd better. No. Look, Elsar, I believe you. I'm going to turn you loose. But on one condition. What's that? That you get a job. Work at it. Prove you're honest. I'm going to give you a week to find one. Oh, Marshal, I've been working all my life. I'm tired. I'll give you a week, Elsa. And if you don't have a job by then... You're going to have to leave the country. Who do you like in the World Series? New York Giants? Cleveland Indians? Well, I guess that question is on everybody's mind right about now. Of course, the series starts Wednesday at New York's famous polo ground. Then the action moves to Cleveland's great municipal stadium. You fans who have been to these great ballparks know they have one thing in common. The giant Chesterfield scoreboard signs, which instantly flash the official scorer's decision. It's a hit. Yes, sir, as the big signs say, Chesterfield's a hit with baseball fans everywhere, with millions of smokers around the country. It's America's most popular two-way cigarette. Whether you enjoy the World Series at the ballpark, on TV or radio, there's one thing for sure. You'll enjoy it much more with Chesterfield. In the whole wide world, no cigarette satisfies like a Chesterfield. Buy Chesterfield King Size or Chesterfield Regular, both at the same price in most places. Get a carton today. Evening. 
anything, Matt. Oh, sit down, Doc. Oh, thank you, thank you, Matt. Oh, man. The street looks pretty quiet tonight. Oh, it's early yet, Doc. Uh -huh. Oh, see, Chester was telling me about that boy, uh, Elser. Yeah. I hope I was right turning him loose this morning. Uh -huh. Well, Matt, it sounds to me like he, he's one of those fellows that's just about to go bad. A push one way or the other can make the whole difference. Well, I guess it's worth a chance, Doc. Yeah, most all of us have had a little help somewhere along the way. <laughs> Otherwise, there'd be nothing but thieves and crooks walking around. <laughs> I'll bet you did, Matt. Or you wouldn't be trying to help this boy. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, he didn't steal those cows. No, but he came a lot closer to it than a man should, Doc. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Oh, hello, Doc. Good evening, Chester. You better step into the Alpha Ganda, Mr. Dillon. Pants is in there about to have a fight with young Elser. What? It's not a gun fight. Elser ain't armed. But he's making Pants awful mad. I will see you later, Doc. So long, Matt. What's Elser up to, Chester? Well, sir, he's been bragging to Pence about his not getting to hang him, about not being in jail and all. It ain't improving Pence's temper none. Uh, oh, uh, hello, Marshal. Uh, hello, John. Is Elser drunk? Well, he's been drinking, but he ain't drunk. Well, he won't find a job hanging around saloons. No, sir. Over there at the bar, Mr. Dillon. Now, you just shut up and get yourself out of here, little thief. I ain't a thief. I ain't a murderer either, Pants. Oh, I told you for the last time, Elster. All right, that's enough, man. Don't kick him. Well, then throw him in jail where he belongs, Marshal. I just ain't gonna listen to his talk. You don't have to. I'll handle him. You'll handle him? You sure done fine so far. Hit me. I'll kill you for this, Pants. Shut up, Elsa. I got up on your feet. I didn't hurt you. But I sure will next time. And there won't be no marshal around to nurse you, Elsa. I didn't come to Dodge to get kicked around. Not no more. Not never. You ain't even got half of what's coming to you, Clint. Leave him alone, Pence. Now you, Elsa, I told you to go find a job, you remember? A job? It's a gun I'm going to find me. He wouldn't hit me if I'd been carrying a gun. You start wearing a gun and I'll throw it in the Arkansas and you went after it. Come over here a minute. I'm giving you a chance to make good, Elser, but it's not going to last forever. Now you get out of here and start doing something about it. The next day, I had to go up to Fort Larned on government business. But before I left, I talked to a couple of ranchers who were in town about hiring on Steve Elser. However, they'd heard about him and said I was making a big mistake trying to help a boy that was headed for the end of a rope. Well, I argued with him, but it was no use. And I decided I'd try to find him a job in town to start with. I was gone two days, and the night I got back, I went over to the Texas Trail looking for Chester. He wasn't there, but Kitty was. I saw Chester about an hour ago, Matt. He didn't expect you back till tomorrow. Uh, it didn't take as much time as I thought, Kitty. Uh, tell me about things here, huh? Well, nobody's been shot or hung, I know of. <laughs> There's one thing I don't like, though. Oh, what's that, Kitty? You know Ben Hander? Uh, for one reason or another, I've thrown Ben Hander in jail at least ten times. Well, he and Steve Elser have been running together the last couple of days. What? Mm hmm. Uh, that's mighty poor company for Elser. I think you're wasting your time trying to help that kid, Matt. As much as I admire your reason. He isn't wearing a gun, is he? Not so far. <sighs> I don't like this, Kitty. Could be that all Ben Hander needs to get into real trouble is a partner. Somebody just like Elsa who will kind of look up to him, egg him on. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping the boy had done something about finding a job. Maybe you've been too easy on him, Matt. I've done what I thought was right, Kitty. I know. Has, uh, 
Bill Prince been around or Bowers? No, but I heard Bowers has spread it all over the country how the law turned a cow thief loose. Oh, sure, I expected that. Well, you can't blame people for wondering about it. No, but I can sure blame Bowers for backing up Prince on a lynching. If he's going to talk about the law, why doesn't he start with that? Matt. What? Look around, headed for the bar. Yeah. I'm going to have a talk with him, Kitty. I'll see you later. Sure. Hello, Elser. Oh, Marshal. I heard you's out of town. I got back tonight. You going to buy us a drink, Marshal? Not likely, Andrew. Dad ain't very friendly. You found a job yet, Elser? No. No, I ain't. You been looking? Oh, some. Where? Here and there. Where? Oh, it's no use, Marshal. First man I asked said nobody would hire me. Anyway, there's no law man's got to have a job. You got to have one. I'll lay off him, Marshal. He ain't done nothing. Of course he ain't. Why is everybody always kicking me around? Oh, you think that's what I'm doing? Everybody is. Makes me ashamed. Nobody will trust me. Oh, sir, I'll help you find a job tomorrow. Around Dodge somewhere. But I told you nobody... People will trust you as soon as you prove to them that they can. No, they won't. Besides, I don't want no job. I just don't want one. There's no other way, Elsa. You find a job by tomorrow night or get out. No, you can't do that. You give him a week before... I changed my mind, Hunter, since he's met you. What's that got to do with it? You're no good. And sooner or later he'll be in trouble. So he's got to move faster now. You, you got no right to talk that way about me, Marshal. Why not? Well, why not? Oh, leave him be, Marshal. Leave me be, too. I'll make out all right. I always do. Oh, you made out fine in that cottonwood grove, Elsa. So far, you're not doing much better here. Now, you come see me tomorrow night and you have a job. And if you think I don't mean what I say, you ask Hander here. He knows me. Today, one-way cigarettes, one size, that is, are almost obsolete because they just don't give smokers what they want. Either way, you'll like Chesterfield best. It's America's most popular two-way cigarette because only Chesterfield gives you the right combination of the world's best tobaccos. Tobaccos that are highest in quality, low in nicotine, best for you. You and I smoke for relaxation for comfort, for satisfaction. And in the whole wide world, no cigarette satisfies like a Chesterfield. You smoke with the greatest possible pleasure when your cigarette is Chesterfield. Yes, these six words, highest in quality, low in nicotine, mean Chesterfield is best for you. Get a carton of Chesterfield. Chesterfield regular, Chesterfield king size both at the same price in most places. This is the best. Chesterfield. And the time to change today. Maybe Kitty was right about my being too easy on young Elser. But as I found out next day, being hard on him didn't work any better. I just had breakfast at a little Mexican place at the edge of town, and I was walking back into the plaza when I noticed a small crowd in front of the Overland Express Company. I started across to find out what was going on when Chester spotted me and came running over. 
He shot him, Mr. Dillon. He, he shot the clerk in there. Who shot him? Ben Hander. He tried to hold the place up about ten minutes ago. Oh, where is he to get away? Well, they say some men chased him down to the OK stable, and they've got him trapped in there. All right, come on. I, I talked to the clerk, Doc's with him now. It was Ben Hander alone, Mr. Dillon. Elcher wasn't with him. Oh. He got any money? No, sir. Some men heard shooting come run across the plaza right away, and Hander got scared and left. I wonder where the boy is. Nobody ain't seen him I talked to. Yeah. How about the clerk, Chester? Oh, he took one bullet in the shoulder. It's going to hurt some, but it won't kill him. Look, there they are, Mr. Dillon. Four or five of them, looks like, spread out around the stable area. I guess they must be waiting for you. Good. Hey, that one right there, ain't, ain't that Bill Pence? Yeah, it is. Pence? Hey, Bill Pence. Yeah. Well, we got him, Marshal. He's in that stable there. No way for him to leave. I'll get him shot. Okay. I want you and the other men to stay where you are, Pence. I'll go on after him. Well, he's armed, Marshal. Sure. We could set fire to the place. But with horses in there? Oh, I forgot about them. Chester. Yes, sir. Wait here till I yell for you, huh? Well, Mr. Dillon, if it's okay, I'd like to come up to the door with you. All right, sure. If he gets past us, Pence, shoot him. Well, you sure will, Marshal. That door swings out, Chester. Now that you're here, you can pull it open, but stay behind it. I'll go in alone. Okay, sir. Hander? Hander! It's Marshal Dillon. You stay where you are, Marshal. You can't get away, Hander. There are five men waiting out here for you. Now, don't be a fool. That clerk you shot isn't hurt bad. If you try to run now, you'll die for it. I didn't kill him? No. I'm coming in, Hunter. It won't do you any good to shoot me, Hunter, so you might as well give up. Now, you take your choice. You go to prison for a few years or die this morning. Don't shoot, Marshal. I'm quitting. All right, then walk up here with your hands in the air. I'm coming. Are you wrong with you? What's that? Who are you talking to? It's me, Marshal. Elsie. What? Well, then you come out with your hands up, too, Elsie. We're coming. Chester. Yes, sir? Come on in here. All right, that's far enough, you two. Stand right there. Elsa, so you was in on this? No, he wasn't. He wasn't anywhere near that express office. He's wearing a gun. I got a right to wear a gun just like any other man. He had nothing to do with that robbery, Marshal. Clerk and those men that followed me here can tell you that. He was waiting here with your horses. You can't prove that, Marshal. Why are you standing up for him, Hunter? He's a good boy. People let him alone. I ain't done a thing. Chester, take Hunter's gun. Yes, sir. I got it, Mr. Dillon. What about Elsa? No, leave him alone. Step over here, Hunter. Elsa? What, Marshal? I still think you were waiting here to get away with Hunter. But he's right about it being hard to prove. I ain't done a thing, Marshal. No, but you would have. Anyway, I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm taking Hatter to jail now, and while I'm doing it, I want you to get out of Dodge. For good. And don't come back. Kicking me around again, ain't you? I've done all I can for you, Elsa. There's nothing more I can do. You're on your own now. All right, Hander, you know where the jail is. Start walking. Sure, my shoe. So long, kid. Let's go, Hander. Mr. Dillon! He was... He was drawn.
drawing on you, Mr. Dillon. He, he was going to shoot you in the back. Is he dead? He died before he hit the ground, Hander. I can see it from where I was standing. Thanks for warning me, Chester. I was just starting to follow you, and I seen him move out of the corner of my eye. I had a feeling he might try it. You did? That's why I was half ready for it. Anyway, it's the first time I've been right about him. And I sure guessed wrong up till now. But it was worth it, Mr. Dillon. Trying to help him, I mean. No, not him, Chester. It was already too late to help him. I should have known that. And now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George Fenneman. Ladies and gentlemen, I have two important pieces of news for you. First, as of this Saturday night, October 2nd, Gunsmoke goes back to its original time, where you discovered it and liked it. That's 8 p.m. in most cities, this Saturday and every Saturday. Second, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Perry Como will bring you an exciting new program with all of radio and TV's top tunes. That starts next Monday night, October the 4th at 9 p.m. So remember, Gunsmoke every Saturday night, Como every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. They're both on CBS Radio. Thank you. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Lawrence Dobkin, Joe Cranston, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again this coming Saturday as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, Fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. L and M filters are sweeping the country. And the reason's simple. No filter compares with L and M's exclusive miracle tip for quality or for effectiveness. And notice how easy it draws. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine. Yes, only L&M gives you effective filtration, and no other cigarette has it. Our statement of quality goes unchallenged. L&M is America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. Buy L&M's, now king size or regular, both at the same low price. Remember, a week from tonight, hear the great new Perry Como Show on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And this coming Saturday, hear Gunsmoke, both over CBS Radio. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>